praise the lord my dear brothers and sisters a warm welcome to one and all of you and i greet you in the name of the lord and savior jesus christ as always i feel very privileged and it's a great honor to share the word of god with the royal people of god oh who are those royal people i asking me this question you are that royal brother you are that royal sister because why you and i are called in the line of royal priesthood 1 peter 2 9 says therefore that's why i feel very privileged as if i am um sharing the word of god i won't call preaching or teaching the word of god sharing the word of god with my beloved royal you know princes and queens and kings <laughs> and you are those and yes and that's why it, it it gives me a lot of excitement whenever i come into these sessions all right so warm welcome to this series where we are dealing from the the subject of um the spiritual anatomy and spiritual anatomy comprises of the four nomenclatures and the four nomenclatures are the body mind spirit and soul and holy spirit partners and he works with those um with with the spirit especially and spirit is capable to make his decision um not without the help of another person and that another person is going to be either the holy spirit or evil spirit it depends what kind of doctrines had been fed into the minds of spirit and that's why body and mind really plays a role they are, they work in partnership the body and mind work in partnership with the spirit right so what happens is um you might be wearing that bulletproof bulletproof jacket and you are in the battlefield and the enemy fires all the bullets at you and the bulletproof jacket helps you to um you know save your life and the bulletproof um, helps not al- not allowing the bullet to penetrate into your body but what if the enemy is going to take a rocket launcher you know rocket launcher launcher right it's like missile launcher and he presses that one button could the bulletproof jacket prevent that rocket launcher or that missile to land no it cannot why because the bulletproof jacket had been designed for a specific purpose or a specific function right its only job is to protect the person from the bullet but then if the law rocket launcher is coming um, and landing up a missile the person is going to be blown into pieces for which you need a different device which will be shooting another missile against that missile that's been shot by the enemy and they dash against each other in the mid air and they are demolished why am i giving this example imagine the spirit is like the bulletproof and it is not having the capability to launch missiles against the missile which means the spirit is in such a condition where it had ignored the admonishing words from the scriptures through the holy spirit has been fed and whatever the body and mind is going through as a exposition in the world right through experiences and circumstances they are shooting bullets at the spirit and the spirit is coached coached enough with those minimal scriptural verses right and able to protect not getting penetration um, into the soul the inner man inner man is not harmed or injured however there are going to be seven more dirty devils right there are furthermore terrific expositions that are going to happen in the world uh, through various circumstances and experiences and that will be like the rocket bomb launch and what happens the spirit is being destroyed why because he is not paid attention to the holy spirit as much as the holy spirit is trying to admonish and exhort and the evil spirit also will make his efforts yeah in 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 rebelling against the scriptures and confusing leading into misconceptions deceiving and all that and finally what happens is spirit is not so strong enough to decide things 
and therefore it falls as a prey into the hands of the evil spirit and at the same time the body and mind are also injecting so it's like a two way injection one side the evil spirit is injecting in the injecting and the other side the body and mind also getting exposed through the wiles of the devil right and the and and finally the spirit is get, getting feeble now how to overcome it that's exactly what we are dealing uh, you know through this sessions right all of us have this experience all of us go through these kind of problems in our day to day life and that's why we need to meditate in the word of god helping the spirit to be fed with the right doctrines which means the holy spirit on the other end is telling the spirit hey you need to convey the message back to the body and mind and get them under your control and the body and mind says that you know come let's go and kill the guy um the spirit tells no according to my scriptures you are supposed to forgive your brethren and it talks about the fruit of the spirit as self control long suffering therefore body and mind you know how much ever they try to convince the spirit the spirit is strong why because it's grounded and rooted in the word of god and over a period of time body and mind also will fall in place right and therefore what happens is spirit is the one who will control the body and mind and not the other way around right how much ever the devil is going to send his agents through the world people who are going to deceive them fool them it could be false prophets in their own church the body and mind will not be shaken on this um, subject or on these lines we have we had been discussing a lot right we had been discussing enough and i wouldn't call it as enough uh, because this is our 70 plus session i don't know 72nd or 73rd and we are dealing through various subjects but connecting it with the spiritual composition the body mind spirit and soul we are not moving away from that right but then we are dealing with various subjects subjects like what the blessed assurance in the resurrection power of jesus glory in the new covenant and uh, you know god given task and uh, reconciliation as a topic and uh, so many things we had been discussing right there are 70 plus sessions already in the playlist attached to this series of spiritual composition likewise we are dealing with a very important subject unpardonable sin now in connection to the spiritual composition as how the body and mind could get into deception and how the spirit could be completely kept in dark state and what kind of role the evil spirit plays and what kind of roles the holy spirit plays to redeem you to deliver you to um, what to say uh, to free you from the bondage and give you that light and give you that authority right but then you are not ready to pay attention to the holy spirit the reason is because you have gone far too far in a, you know d- deep into the trap and therefore it takes time right it's progressive action for some people uh, you know they just want the instant uh, deliverance it, it doesn't happen that way why because your body mind and spirit is kind of too much soaked into the uh, worldly pleasures and wiles of the devil and stuff like that therefore it's not easy for you to come back in the same pace now we are dealing with the subject of unpardonable sin from the book of mark chapter 3 and uh, verse 28 is our meditation topic 28 29 30 all three are meditation topic but um, we were not able to move away from mark 28 we are stuck there for a long time we are dealing with assuredly i say to you all sins will be forgiven the sins of men and whatever blasphemies they may utter right god makes the statement jesus makes the statement right whatever blasphemies whatever kind of sinful deeds the sons of men may undergo right they may commit sin against each other they may commit sin against the father they may commit sin against the son of god that is jesus right that's the first section 29 and 30 these are the different subject of blaspheming against the holy spirit i'm not even come there yet right but i'm coming here uh i'm dealing with the subject of how we sin with each other and we sin against god through our sinful desires through the lusts of the world through the passions of the world if we understand that concept clearly 29 and 30 is very very easy to understand you won't have much difficulty to understand 29 and 30 in fact we are already covering 29 and 30 too right whatever blasphemies you speak against mankind against the father against the son son of god um i think it's more or less applicable to 
speaking blasphemies and sinning against Holy Spirit, but there is thin line of difference, which I will talk later, um, and we will not get into that subject now. So on the same lines, we had been discussing from the life of Matthew, Zacchaeus, adulterous women, Saul before he became Paul and Peter, and now we are dealing from the subject of prodigal son, right? That elder son. Actually, our focus is on younger son also, but the focus will be more on elder son and we will have a different perspective to learn from there. Why? Because we are dealing from the subject of unpardonable sin. What the world calls it as unpardonable sin from the Bible perspective, from the scriptural perspective, from the sight of God, it turns out to be an unpardonable sin. What the world calls out to be unpardonable sin, God says it's pardonable. Why? I say 55 says, my ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts. The way how God looks at things is different from the way how men or the devil or the demonic forces or the demons look at. That's exactly what we are trying to understand through these scriptural reading and meditations. You understand what I'm saying? So that's why we all need to be grounded and rooted in the word of God and read the word of God with passion and read it in such a way that you're able to teach others or help others to get them to God, right? You all take, you all read it in a way that, in a, from a singular perspective, but we should be reading Bible from the plural perspective that it's not only to me. I may have to preach and teach the same thing to many of my brothers and sisters and lead them into Christ. That way, you will pay more attention. Why? Because the other person is going to ask you more questions, which means you have to explain them more than what you explain it to yourself. That's why you need to always imagine as if you, you are talking to the crowd. For example, the ministry, what God has given to us is this online ministry. It's like an offline ministry, right? Not even online ministry where we are preaching, recording these messages and publishing it. And many people listen and they are blessed, right? But while I'm talking this message in my private room, um, it's like a private conversation. I see no one, but then I always imagine in my virtual sense that there are at least some millions of people or tens and hundreds and thousands of people are listening to me. Therefore, I speak with all due diligence. Yeah, as if they are listening to me and asking questions. That's why I ask so many questions on your behalf and I reply to it and I welcome you to ask more questions. All right. Now, how do you ask questions? You can comment in the YouTube channel where we are publishing the video. Now, about this prodigal son, we had been discussing from the word of God, that is Luke chapter 15, verses 11 to 32 will be our meditation verse, but it's in very much connected to Mark 3.28, which is dealt with unpardonable sin subject. And unpardonable sin subject is very much connected to the spiritual composition, that is the body, mind, spirit, and soul, because ultimately all four are being put to action, right? And therefore we cannot ignore ignore one and consider the other. That's not the way how it works. That's not the right way to read Bible. All right. Now then he said, a certain man had two sons, right? We're limiting it to two sons. And the anger, anger of them said to his father, father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. On which in the previous session, we explained it very well. Um, as how he puts his shopping list right in front of the father and and the father listens to the voice right and father doesn't <clears throat> excuse me father doesn't sanction all the petitions that you place right in front of him because father says my hands are not short and my ears are not heavy that doesn't mean that he will be sanctioning everything no he will only sanction only if it abides by his will, provided your prayers also must be positioned in such a way how Jesus prayed that prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. Father, if it's willing, sorry, if it's possible, please take away this cup, which means I don't want to go through this crucifixion, crucifixion and then being bet and bruised and um, and you will hide your face and I won't be able to bear that moment of time where you will hide your face which I have never gone through. Not even once I have gone through that experience. Therefore, I am terrified even if I would be thinking of that. 
then instantaneously he gets reminded by the Holy Spirit, hey, this is the very reason why you had been sent to this world. What kind of prayer is this, Jesus? And then immediately he says, not my will, Father, but may your will be done. When he places the petition on the Father's table with that disclaimer, not my will, not my desire, not my wish, but may your will be done. God immediately sanctions it saying, not your will, son, my will. Please go through this. I would allow you to go through this. And Jesus accepts it. And then immediately angels have been sent. In the book of Luke only you can say, angels have been sent to minister to Jesus. Probably the angels had been trying to remind all the messianic prophecies and encourage him. Jesus, you see, this is like a 4,000 years old plan. And God, the Father, had disclosed this plan as early as Genesis 3.15. And the mankind had been waiting for 4,000 years to see this plan being executed, to see this plan being accomplished and implemented. And this is how they encouraged Jesus, as if Jesus was not aware. Jesus is aware, but then... What you are aware already, sometimes you need people to repeat the same to just encourage you. Yeah, that's called as motivation and encouragement. And we all have to learn this principle from the angels who had been sent by the father to minister to his son Jesus. And then Jesus was encouraged immediately. He didn't feel lonely anymore. And that encouragement, that motivation given to, the, given to Jesus from the heaven by the by the heavenly father he took him all the way to the cross and to the extent where he says it is finished and that gave him the strength to bear all the brutal tortures and harassments physically mentally right biologically uh, he went through all of these harassments and what gave him that energy was those words of uh, you know that words that uh, were given to him through the angels the ministering words when all of these things took place, not before Jesus makes that statement, not my will, Father, may your will be done. This is how you need to pray. Not for the sake of praying from your lips, no, from your hearts, from your mind, from your spirit. You need to feel and pray with a broken and contrite spirit. Yeah? And truthfully, honestly, you need to pray. Father, I knew not what is going to happen, but you are the right person. To guide me to help me and therefore father fulfills your request and he accepts that he accepts all petitions he doesn't say no this petition is not um, uh, it's invalid you know you cannot send it to my office desk you go to the neighboring counter this is how you will see in the government office right you go to one desk they will say go to that desk or in the banks also and you go to that desk no no that desk <laughs> And you put another desk there, no, 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 this desk and all that. You will have to ro reel between six or seven people. And ultimately, the seventh guy who was responsible, who is actually the guy who will take that petition, this fellow will pour out the frustration on that seventh fellow. But it was not his fault, right? That's the way how men organize things. But God doesn't organize it that way. He accepts all the petition, fine. But he rejects certain, he accepts certain. Now, what makes him to accept certain petition? Petition, it's reverse. I'm explaining it from the reverse perspective. This is not the way how you should assume, right? Because you would emphasize, Father, Father, give it to me. By faith, I claim it in the name of Jesus. Therefore, give it to me. He's not going to give. Yeah, if you're a true believer in Christ. Why? Because he will teach you good lessons through delay. Right, And he will send his angels to minister. He will send the Holy Spirit to minister, saying that this is not the way to pray. You cannot emphatically ask God. You need to ask him to fulfill the petition only if he is willing. Correct? Because he is the one who knows the future and he is very much aware of the consequences if he sanctions this petition or rejects this petition. Only he understands. Every request that you place to God, every petition, every supplication, that you place on the father's table, you need to understand only he is aware what are the post consequences, whether it's good for you, bad for you, whether it's going to benefit you or not. That's why you need to trust your father blindly with all your heart, mind and soul. Understand? Now, Jesus made that statement, right? Now, why certain applications are getting accepted and, and, and rejected? We will discuss a little bit more. Right? And then we will move to the next verse. I'm talking from the believers in Christ's perspective. Non-believers, they don't belong to this category, I told. Unfortunately, 
their petition is going to someone else's table, demon's table, right? And demon has been given that authority also to bless his people. He also had been given powers to heal his people, to take good care of the people. In fact, if you see most of the prominent people, rich people are non-believers. If you see some of the very healthy people, bodybuilders and all that, they are non-believers. Yeah, he blesses them more. Therefore, that disturbs the heart of the believer saying that, look at those guys, they're all sinners and see how they are getting blessed. And we are worshiping the true God and we are in suffering. That's gospel. That's gospel. In the midst of the suffering, you still love God. He would test you. Why? Because bigger is your blessing in eternity. But they do not go through such a blessing in eternity. Therefore, they are allowed to enjoy in the short span of time, in the passing life. It's like a passing cloud. Their life is like passing cloud. Let them enjoy. But you understand the truth of the gospel. You are walking in the light. Are you a child of light? Then you definitely understand that this is all passing away. These sufferings are all passing away. It's only for a mere moment. And our God is not sadistic God. Yeah, he doesn't allow any temptations beyond what we could bear. He makes a way for you to escape even in that span of time where you are allowed for the temptation. Merciful God, compassionate God. And it's only for a mere moment, Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4.17 and 1 Corinthians 10.13. I already spoke about 1 Corinthians 10.13. Yes, therefore you don't focus on the things that are temporary. You focus on the things that are permanent. That means you are looking at the things that are above, not those which belong to this world. Colossians 3.2 and 2 Corinthians 4.18. If you are reminded of these scriptures, your petitions are going to be, your petitions are going to be things that are above, above. Heavenly matters you will speak. You will speak about righteous topics. You will speak about holy deeds. You will never speak for yourself. You will never speak for your material needs. It will all be taken care automatically by God. Yet you will place... The petition, because why God taught you, when you ask and receive, that that uh, God God feels so delighted, right? When the child asks, God feels so delighted to give. For that sake, you are asking. That's all. Otherwise, you have faith already that God is going to take care of your materialistic needs and you don't have to necessarily ask him. But you ask him to show that respect and honor. And you want to make God feel good about you. Of course, right? Always you will have that mind. If you are... A uh, true believer in Christ, if you are walking in the ways of God, if you are being led by the Spirit of God, that is Holy Spirit, you will always be mindful. What is God thinking of me? Is God happy? Is God joyful? Is God pleased with me? So what happens? You will naturally end, end up doing things in the way that He likes. And all that He dislikes, you will ignore. You will keep it far away from you. You will keep it at a distance. You don't want to displease God. Your petitions also will be likewise that it will not displease God. It will not dishearten him. It will not make him unhappy. And what are the petitions that makes him unhappy? What are the petitions that makes him happy? Anything that you can ask God, there is no discrimination of what you should ask, what you shouldn't ask. You can ask. But then make your request known to God without any anxiety in the sense, don't emphatically tell him that I need this. Philippians 4, 6 says, right? In thanks and in prayer make your request known to God which means thank you father that you answered this prayer but not my will may your will be done why we are making that prayer of thank you for answering if his answer is going to be no if his answer is going to be no it is not appropriate that also is an answer from God and you should be happy why because if God is saying no in his great wisdom that simply means that is for your good because all the plans for you are not for evil, but for your good. Bible says in Jeremiah 29, 11, and God searches your heart and tests your mind and before which he's not going to respond. Jeremiah uh, 17, 10 says that. Yes, Jeremiah 24, 7 also says that if you have the right heart given to you or set, set, set on the side of God, then it's very certain that you're going to ask the right things to God. You understand all these verses are going to help you. To understand, help you understand the condition of your spirit and your mind and your heart, the condition of your soul. Is he overwhelmed with joy? When you make certain petitions, deep within you, you will feel this is a crazy thing to ask. You can be more or less sure that God is going to reply 
to you saying that no my son this is not the right thing to ask sorry i cannot grant this to you if your child is going to ask you get me an ak47 would you get it probably you will get it but you will get a toy gun not the real ak47 gun it's going to shoot and it's going to kill people and it's going to kill itself you you would not want your child to go through that bloodshed scenarios understand you all you 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 all won't do that right and uh, that's why jesus is saying which of the father will uh, give the child a snake when the child is asking for bread huh? or you will give a stone instead of something uh, you read in matthew 6 you will understand do not worry about tomorrow under the title we have done some preaching also on that right you know how to say no you know how to say yes to your child and when your heavenly father says no to you why are you getting upset when you know how to say no don't you have that much of trust that god definitely knows much more than us and if he is saying no on top of your emphatical petition your desperate petition and you definitely want an answer you're shaking his throne give me an answer and we spoke about some petitions like crazy petitions like i need that girl get me married god is not some marriage broker he's not running a matrimonial site right to go and convince that family and all that don't treat him so cheaply beloved that's exactly my point i don't tell him like my neighbor got a car and i want a bigger car than that give it to me you have not understood the gospel even 0.111 percentage or 00.000 not 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 one percentage the important law that you hear from god jesus our god our lord jesus love the lord with all your mind and heart and love the neighbor as yourself appreciate him encourage him why this car get a bigger car god bless you from all your heart you need to feel happy for what your neighbor had achieved but not envy with him bitter envy is not from god it's from the devil james chapter 3 verses 16 onwards you taken sorry uh, yes verses 16 onwards 13 to 16 you taken read you will understand bitter envy is not from god it's a self seeking spirit it's demonic attitude with all this attitude mixed up when you place a petition and you expect god to answer yes which means you are not asking his permission you are informing him you understand the difference between the petition that goes to him as a real petition or that goes to him as an information real petition will seek an approval in all your wisdom in your great wisdom god please guide me because why i don't have enough wisdom i don't have enough knowledge i don't have enough experience i don't understand the wiles of the devil enough the devil is clever than the mankind bible says yeah i don't understand but you understand it better than me your holy spirit understands it better than me therefore you guide me father yet i want to ask you but i don't know you guide me which means you are asking for his approval if you are placing any petition i gave you a few examples okay it may be related to your promotion it may be related to your dispute in your own family quarrel with your own wife and husband or you know or your children is not listening to you and you are worried about their future or you are worried about your neighbor always causing nuisance or your boss is so messy with you and uh, you you know that there is there are changes that are going to happen in your company and you, there are so many petitions that you place but then you are going to ask him this is my problem father but then not my will may your will be done if you want to say a no say a no if you want to say an s say an s but may it proceed from your mouth and from your heart from your spirit father and guide me because you are the only one who can see the future not me are you asking god petitions are you placing petitions on the lord's table this way this manner i'm not able to move away from the verse number 12 because why this is a big problem in christendom today and that tells the condition of their spirit body and mind how immature they are and who is ruling and governing them when he emphatically asks the father i don't know what you will do father i need my promotion tonight why because another colleague who is his competitor first of all you have the competition attitude you are not on the side of god you are not supposed to compete with anybody you are supposed to compete with yourself <laughs> you and yourself are the best competitors right you compete with yourself don't compete with anyone else yeah and i tell the same thing to the students right don't don't feel jealous when somebody scores higher marks but compete with your own marks you scored 80 percentage you know focus getting 85 percentage and you scored 85 raise the bar aim for 90 and ask god to guide you he loves to guide people that way 
yeah and you don't care whether your colleague is getting promotion double promotion you don't care you have to ultimately depend on god to guide you in this time in this season he does everything ecclesiastes 3 1 to 8 you see you not see you read you will understand there is a time to weep there is a time to be joyful there is a time to mourn there is a time to be sorrowful there is a time to be grievous there is a time to be having fun everything you see there and those times in its season god decides you in fact you know what you will want god to decide is what i'm trying to say you don't want to decide all by yourself you would want god to decide for you why because that will be the most appropriate thing for any child of god to receive as a response from the father but of course you are not going to refrain from placing your petition you are not going to refrain from placing your request if you don't do that then of course you are violating another commandment make your request known to god yes talk to god when you pray watch and pray god will respond he will answer psalm 43 psalm 50 15 psalm 91 15 16 during the time of the trouble call unto me i will answer you i will deliver you i will honor you and i will show you the life of salvation bible says but then not without prayer god is able to do all of these things so prayer is important yeah petitioning god is important requesting god is important supplicating god is important without which god cannot respond but then you cannot do it with a mindset of you know with a desperate anxiety mindset and um, emphatical mindset god i need the answer somehow which means what you are commanding god you are placing an agenda and saying that god that agenda must be your agenda which means my wish must be your wish my will be must be your will my desire must be your desire my petition i just need to answer i uh, hear an answer as yes i don't want to hear a no is this the way how you talk to god one side it tells yeah you are very disrespectful you are dis- dishonoring him you are treating him like a maid servant giving your shopping list i hey, go to that shop and get me that those bunch of things and who's going to pay for it you have to pay for it how disrespectful and how rude and arrogant you are you don't even pay yeah you want it for free plus it's your shopping list no that's not the way how god answers prayers to the believers i'm still in the believers category beloved i'm not talking about the i'm talking about believers only but there are two types of believers number one is those who truly love god but unknowingly they do uh, get into these kind of practices and god rejects those petitions why because he understands that their love is great love is good love is real but then they do this all they get into all of these things because they are immature they are still growing as christians or they are in deception or somebody has uh, injected those misconceptions doctrines which tells that you emphatically pray fast and pray 3 days god is going to some of answer you i have seen many um, many charismatic prayers being conducted that way 3 days we will sit on the feet of the lord and we will we will make god answer <laughs> one pastor makes this statement i will make god answer who are you you are greater than god are you the ruler over god god appointed you as the ruler to him that you could rule him and say that hey you better answer this what does it mean is exactly this is what it means i will make god answer god will not be given any other choice other than saying an answer yes or a no whatever right and they will quote scriptures like second chronicles 20 this is our people of jehoshaphat made god to answer no you read the second chronicles 20 you will understand what it is how much they humbled uh, and how much they surrendered and how much they were leaning on god asking for help and they needed help desperately that was their situation because why in less than 72 hours they are going to be completely devoured destroyed murdered killed yes they are going to be wiped off from this world by their enemies and god came down and said battle belongs to me tomorrow you will stand still and see what the lord is going to do and they collected the spoils for 3 days and 3 nights they become crorepedies millionaires trillionaires in one overnight they became super rich and not just that they didn't have enemies and their enemies were wiped off how many more examples you need esther prayed and the whole israel prayed for 3 days and 3 nights fasting and prayer desperate situation they need god to answer else why they're going to be wiped off 
and God answers. But not without a prayer. That's exactly my point. God would have still answered without a prayer. But God is more delightful when the children cry out, when the children you know, ask for petition. You don't even have to cry. You have to go ask God with all due respect, with all due reverence, with all due honor that he deserves. He's sovereign God. And they did that. What happened? You know what happened to him, right? The same place which he had planted to make Mordecai hang 70 feet, man. Can you believe? The building which is three story is 43 feet, right? It's like a six story building height, you know, right? Six story building height, 70 feet or a seven story building. Everybody will have to see the hanging. This was the intention of Haman. And they petition against that wicked man. They petition against the wiles of the devil and God answered it on time. Our God doesn't say no to everything that you ask him to do. But then your intention must be right. Your intention must be right. The time and the season and the uh, time frame, time span you are stipulating before God must be sensible. And God has given you that wisdom. God has given you that knowledge. And Holy Spirit is there to help you to place the right petition. And God is going to answer. See, if you are a true child of God, if you are placing 10 petitions, I will tell you. All 10 petitions will be granted. And some petitions, you will place it in the feet of God, asking him to make an answer no. <laughs> what kind of petition is that? You would have discovered that a brother in the church is involved in some evil matters and all that. And that person wants to have friendship with you. But then you will ask God to delink that association. It's like asking God to say no to that friendship. I'm just giving you basic example, right? But we don't tend to make such petitions. What to do is a believer, uh, my church member, what to do and all that. Sometimes you make the same petition uh, with your own wife or child. Teach them a lesson, right? Is there any father who doesn't make a petition uh, that bless my child and all that? But is there any father or mother Asking God to chastise my child, punish my child. If required, you break his legs. Therefore, he will learn through that. If, if required, Lord, permit an accident. Why? It's better for him to reach heaven with one leg broken rather than two legs all good but burning in the lake of fire. Are there any fathers making such a prayer? Chastise my child. I'm telling you, the petitions... What you place need not be always related to materialistic blessings, supernatural blessings, uh, dreams and visions. Uh, my child might be a big minister of God. Before that, you have to fix 20 things in your child. And you have told, but your child is not listening. Therefore, you want God to tell him in a way that he would listen. Chastise him, God. And you will quote verses like Proverbs 3, 11, 12. Like how a father uh, chastises a son. I chastise, but he is not listening. But you punish him now. Yeah, I'm just telling you what what will be the right way to petition or what would be the petitions of a believer in Christ? How it would look like? It would look like this. But if you're the second category believer where you're a little immature, you have not understood, probably you were um, deceived and um, uh, your pastor is misleading you and all that. Like I gave you examples of the charismatic. Come, let's go and shake the throne of God. <laughs> this is how they enter into the fasting and prayer. Three days, 40 days and all. Come, let's go and shake. The Nobody can shake the throne of God. You can't even touch the throne of God. It's like, you know, 100,000 volts. You'll feel that electrifying shock. You touch it, you will be burnt to ashes. Whom are you trying to shake? Whom are you trying to press hard and whom are you trying to boss and dictate? The Lord of Lords and King of Kings? Shame on you, brother. You don't even have this much of understanding. How much powerful God is that in? That God doesn't have to do anything. Even if you are nearing his throne with that attitude, his angels won't look, keep quiet. Yeah, His angels are good enough to deal with us. Father doesn't have to do anything. Angel, with one swing of his sword, he's able to, capable to chop off 150,000 heads in the what are what uh, camp? Uh, I think in the Philistine camp, right? In that uh, in that Gideon incident in the Old Testament, if I'm not wrong, correct? 
those angels are enough to handle us so don't have that kind of attitude it's demonic attitude you i have not understood the love of your father therefore your petitions are all incorrect inaccurate inappropriate immature why because your spirit is partnering with mr evil spirit your spirit is not partnering with holy spirit holy spirit on the other side is screaming hard don't do this don't do this he said my won't start monish but you have kicked him out and from there he is praying with a groaning spirit bible says in romans 8:26 and you are not able to hear his voice and all petitions that you make to god are wrong 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 incorrect and inaccurate therefore i will i'm i'm going to talk about an important point now listen to me very carefully since you are emphatically pressing him hard because you love to stay on the side of evil spirit you know what god does he doesn't answer but he hands that petition over into the hands of devil that's as good as like god allowing the devil to tempt you now who is not understanding this tell me i'm talking to the believers in christ non believers they already are on the side of mr devil their petitions are directly going into devil's table there are two tables father's table and demon demon's table right or the lucifer table you can call him as lucifer head of the head of the demonic house this is lucifer non believers petition directly goes to his table and he takes care he has been given all the powers to grant yes or he permitted to grant because they are his children likewise to being a believer in the name of jesus you make all this inappropriate petitions in uh, uh, what to say unacceptable petitions unpardonable petitions yeah with all your immaturity with your own imagination yeah B- because you are already deceived in deception you make such petitions then you know what god does he will transfer that petition all the way to lucifer why because you are emphatical right you want him to answer want you want the tempter to tempt you you want the accuser of the brethren to come and accuse you you want the devil to somehow help you but you have not understood that is exactly what you are petitioning god that's why i had spent lot of time in this concept not able to move don't you think this is the condition of christendom today don't you think this is the nature of the christian prayers today they shake the throne they emphasize god they pull him by the hem of his garment they disturb him and then they blame him now what happens lucifer is very glad to receive that petition transferred petition from the father's table and god allows the temptation to happen and the tempter is all under uh, you know uh, all worked up and excited to answer that petition you will get married to that girl yeah you didn't ask for father as well but you are commanding the father you are informing i am i love that i or the girl is in love i love that guy so much and he's also a non believer and i have all confidence that i can lead him to god and all that let me get married to him in matter of 30 days they will apply for divorce petition and that petition also comes to the father how dare father again transfers it to the lucifer stable and what happens i was go to hell what god unites man shall not separate you made a decision stand by the decision right i want you to understand whatever decisions you make all by your own might your own wisdom your own intellectuals in your own knowledge and all that it will be a failure brother my sister listen to me you need to learn allowing god to make decisions for you however don't refrain from making decisions please make decision god gave us that freedom god allowed us to decide things on our own free will right but then you are going to ask god to review whether my desire is correct whether my uh, decision is correct or not father and therefore you guide me because i do not know i may my there are chances that i might commit something incorrect or commit commit some uh, so, some errors or failures or something like that could be the result or post consequences because of that error in the petition and i want you to review it carefully father and approve it only if you are if you are willing now coming back to that verse 
what is that luke chapter 15 and verse 12 i'm checking on my time my goodness 45 minutes over and the anger of them said to his father father give me the portion of goods that falls to me that's it he would not even want to share how okay let let us let us do a small exercise then i think we will understand this better now this was definitely a petition from a believer who has zero maturity in understanding who the father was and therefore the petition is transferred to the devil and the devil grants all the goods which is not described in the bible so he divided to them his li li livelihood which means he allowed the devil to divide okay divide and give no problem like how we allowed the devil to go and destroy all the livestock of job this is as good as that when you are dividing and giving all this will be destroyed his friends are really waiting the agents of the devil about which we discussed in the last session but if this guy would be the believer in christ he understood who the real god is the true love of god and he felt that uh, you know the the sufferings that jesus went through or forget jesus right even as a old covenant person he would understand truly the love of god how beautifully he led the people of israel from the bondage and he opened the red sea blah 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 everything right now how this petition could would would look like what would be transformed tell me if he this guy had understood the father perfectly fine tell me you know what he would say the statement will be like this father i am in need of the portion of my goods my property my share my wealth yeah that belongs to me and i know it's going to come to me as and as as my inheritance at some point of time because you are my good father and you will not take away anything that belongs to me because it's your will to give it to me but i some of feel i need to ask you to divide at this point of time why because i have certain plans that i want to go to the foreign country and spend time along with my friends and celebrate and have little fun and then i need to see where what is the right business to invest my money and all that this is the reason why i'm asking you to split and give but father i do not know whether it's the right time to do this i do not know whether my friends are faithful enough to help me or come to this i do not even know whether i should invest in a foreign country or i want to invest here and lastly i don't even know whether it is right thing for me to ask is it going to hurt you or not i do not know but this is what i hear through the circle of friends with whom i had been gelling from my childhood could you please guide me could you please help me understand what is right and what is not right because i don't have enough wisdom in my head i have seen you from my birth you had been doing so much for me you have helped me you have guided me and you had always got that good desire and well wisher for me is there any other person more than you that would be desiring all good for me compared to these friends or compared to these guys who are asking me to invest in that business and this business therefore father i'm confused i don't know what to do somehow i feel doing it but not without your consent not without your guidance not without your approval daddy please help me you see i'm converting the prayer <laughs> <laughs> this is also a prayer kind of a prayer a petition kind of a petition a request which he places and what i made also is a prayer on the same lines both have the same meaning that there is a mannerism there is a dependency there is a mannerism to place a petition before god there is a due respect that we all have to uh, uh, you know pay that respect to god there is a honor that we need to pay back to god and there is a dependency dependency on his wisdom and intellectuals and intelligence and there is the trust that whatever my father does for me it will be for my good that trust all these are missing in the first petition don't you think hmm? what kind of prayers you make in your prayer room tell me today i think i'm going to close with the same words i'm not able to move i'm sorry because why we have to fix lot of things yeah what kind of prayers you make in your prayer room is it like the petition one how this guy makes father give me what i want ah huh? i don't want to argue i don't like your advice either many children i have heard them telling i don't advise me 
or some husbands making that statement or wives making the statement to the husband don't advise me i don't need your advice i know everything that i know hmm is it what you make the condition of your spirit is in dark state i'm telling you this your spirit is in deception you are in deception your body mind spirit not listening to the holy spirit you are on the side of the devil and your soul is overwhelmed in sorrow yeah you may feel that you are going through that entertainment time and enjoyment and all but inside of you you don't have that peace people who are in that habit of placing the petition number 1 emphasizing god and asking god and enforcing god and all that informing god thinking that they are respecting god people who are into those practices you will understand this feeling inside of you is not going to give you any peace no joy god gave you right now at least be joyful no you won't be joyful <laughs> you won't be at peace you will be always scared and terrified and all that but externally you will be having lot of fun enjoying and all that your face will be smiling but your heart will be frowning your heart will be bleeding your heart will heart will be filled with fear i'm talking about the condition of the inner man why because i told you many times the inner man's original stature and nature is the image of god and the image of god desires wisdom desires peace desires love desires obedience but when your spirit body and mind are on the side of the evil spirit and does things against the image of god the inner man is overwhelmed in sorrow he is going through grief and therefore you will not have that calmness you understand this is the reason many many rich people they end up in frustration depression and they kill themselves you you and i don't have to go through it this is not the behavior of a child of god this is not the behavior of the believer in christ this itself is a good indication and checklist that you are not on the side of the holy spirit but you are on the side of the evil spirit yeah the way how you petition to god the way how you pray to god itself is a good indication <laughs> that you are not in christ anymore holy spirit is not living inside of you he is outside of you and groaning and uh, screaming for you please don't do this is groaning you know unless i read that verse you won't understand how much it impacts the holy spirit likewise the spirit also helps in our weaknesses for we do not know what we should pray as we ought but the spirit himself make makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered groanings and here spirit is capital s don't think that is your spirit your spirit is smallest spirit of men smallest spirit s means holy spirit why 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 he must groan because he don't have place in your in your in his own temple that is your body is a sanctuary temple of god you have kicked him out right why making all this kind of idiotic petitions so he divided to them his life livelihood now you understand this more clearer why he transferred the petition to devil and lucifer is very glad to divide that why he wants to divide that in a hurry and give go 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 enjoy spend <laughs> and go eat uh, the dust with the pigs you will see what all he has gone through because of the wrong decision because of the wrong petition because he didn't know the mannerism he didn't know how to honor his father he didn't know how to respect his father he didn't know how to depend on his father he didn't know how to trust his father he didn't know why to trust his father <laughs> you will find answers for all these questions let's wind up this session heavenly father we want to thank you we appreciate your mercies lord helping us and guiding us and shedding light from the petitioning perspective father lord bring that reproof and corrections in us instruct us god and help us and teach us the way to pray this time we pray amen god bless you subscribe to our channel get access to all our playlists and videos and may god bless you and share it with all your friends relatives and families i will meet you soon bye